I'm not paid to be a role model. I'm paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. There's the pass to Leitner. Puts it up. Is it the shoes? I was going to rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. One of the world's most talented athletes is retiring. It is true what somebody said today. There was Babe Ruth and Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan and Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky in front. Saved by Flaherty. The rebound. Star! <laughs> just threw it perfectly right over him to Corey Gretzky. Only Brett Favre could do that. I don't care what you say. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Game on! Game on! That's right. This is the Tuesday edition of WHBC Sports Talk here on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. What's going on? 402 on the clock right now. Matt Leonard here with Anthony Deus. How you doing? It's too hot outside. Way too hot. It, you're wearing a Rangers jersey. I get why. Can I tell you? Yeah. It's actually cooler if I wear this. You serious? It, it feels like it. Okay. It does. It's weird. That is weird. I got to say, that is weird. Joshua Umahi, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good. You know, when when it's hot like this, um, you get a little on edge. <laughs> like people seem a little more violent when it's hot outside. Oh God. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I might be I might be a little. Uh, just watch what you say to me today. All right. I don't want to like jump over the table. All right. and Attack one of you. You've been like aggressive the last week yeah, or so. You know, like people yeah. pointing that out to you. Like that people been telling me, "Oh, Josh, you know, chill out a little bit." I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, gets, it gets hot. I get it gets hot. I would turn up with the weather. What can I say? <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. What turn can, up with the heat. What, nice. What can I say? <laughs> All right, we get we got a great show in store today. We got a lot to get into, but you know what? I was gonna play the gold. Should I play the gold song? Yeah. If you don't play it too loud. Okay. Because somebody at me did not normalize it when putting it in the wall. Oh, that's what's wrong with it. I think. Well, we'll have to see. Yeah. Well, I mean. Let's see. Is is this just too loud here? Well, you gotta press the thing. I did. I figured it out. There we go. How about the Rangers? How about them Rangers, Anthony? Eh? Eh? He says eh. eh. What? Why? What's eh? <laughs> you, you, did, you did not expect them to get this far, be honest. No, I didn't. And we'll get to the positive first, but let's start. <laughs> let's start out with the bad. <laughs> Okay. They are going to get destroyed the next round. I agree with you, but let's enjoy this moment right now. Well, no, I really can't because... (laughs) Okay. I know the impending doom is on the horizon, (laughs) but let's let's put it this way. Yeah? I I was talking to a few Islander fan friends of mine, right? I wish Tom was here. I was going to ask him who he's rooting for. But it's not going to be the Rangers. Nobody, no, nobody would. No. But history with the, the history, lightning. Uh, history gets broken all the time. But that's not the point. Okay. The point is, you know, there's this whole thing about it not counting. We've had backup goaltenders. We beat oh, I backup hate that. I hate that. Even though we played one starter, and even though Ranta is basically starting caliber. But hey, listen, I understand. You guys are salty. You fired your head coach for no reason. Because you were listening to your geriatric GM, but that's okay. <laughs> hey. we, we have, in a year, from being dead in the water, not making the playoffs, we have done what the Islanders did, being competitive, with mm-hmm. no expectations. None none what they... I mean, they had all expectations to go back to the conference finals. This yep. Year. They didn't. We did. Hey, that's nice. It's nice. And you know what? You're right. I should, script on them. I should be enjoying it some more, so I'm going to put my your feet, feet up. up. There you go. I'm going to enjoy this moment. There you go. I can't believe this was the team that was going to make it to the playoffs first. <laughs> like, you know, if you look at the Knicks last, you know, in that... Yeah. In 2020-2021... They made it. But it wasn't, you you that, felt that like was... they were going to be back at some point. Yeah, you hoped. You look at the Rangers at the end of 20, 2021, they had, a, they had a long time to go. Funny how things crack up. And I, let, me give a, <laughs> let, me give a, let me give a quick shout out. James Dolan, you intervened at the right time. Congratulations. You did, you did a very good job. The big, st- the big stogie. Good job. The big stogie. Mr. Glenn Sather, the big stogie. Thank you. You did the right thing. It was, it, was, it was a weird firing of J.D. and Jeff Gordon, but it worked out. It worked out. Life is good. I was going to ask you about that. Like, <laughs> as far as like the James Dolan angle, 
Yeah. Why is it that it, it seems like the Rangers and the Knicks are both under that same roof, right? They're under the same. Under the they same. They are. Level, yeah. Right? Why is it that the Knicks, they have this narrative, or Dolan has this narrative of them, that oh, <laughs> the, they, the Knicks just can't get out of their own way? Dolan messes with everything and he ruins everything and all of this stuff. Oh, ye Rangers, of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> oh, you're gonna, t- you're gonna. I'm turning it around. Turning it around on me? No, I get what you're saying. Yeah, like, I mean, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't win at the same time historically. Yeah. The one time they did, they almost won. And then, yeah, some but, guy yep, decided to yep. miss all his shots, <clears throat> John Starks, but. It's okay. We actually named him this time. <laughs> it's okay. You know why? Because, you know, I, I said to Mike Merlot earlier that, earlier last week that, I don't know, they, they give me Bengals vibes where it's like, you better get it done yep. After last night, I don't, I, I don't think that. I think they're going to have continued success for the next few years. It's a back and okay. forth. Thing. Because one night, they won't, the first two games, they won't score anything. Then they'll, in game seven, at home in one of the loudest arenas in there, in the sport, they shut them down. And it's fantastic. And at some point, I know the heartbreak is going to come at some point. Yeah. It is going to. And it's not like a serious loss. It's going to be something humiliating. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> someone getting hurt. Because it happens. Yeah. But I should enjoy the moment. You should I, it, enjoy it's, the it's moment. A it's a big conf- moment. It's conflicting because... You know, I never expected them to get this far. This is the biggest game we've had in this, this year for New York sports, so this is, this you, is pretty big. What do you mean, we? I'm what saying New York we? sports for New York sports oh, okay. fans. Okay. Like, people in New York. No, no I'm not saying we, me. I'm not, I'm not a we with the Rangers. I'm not like that. Okay. I know that. Yeah. I'm not on that level you are. I, I, get I mean, that. The, this, this has been a very miserable franchise. Not as miserable as the other team that in, in, is in the garden. And that's not a shot, I'm just saying. There's a chance they can go all the way. Ooh. I don't like I don't like the matchups in the Western Conference. I mean, there's a chance. It's always a chance. Who would you they rather? Were, let's just think way Edmonton. ahead. Okay. Edmonton by far because they got two players. That's it. <laughs> Those are two good players. They got though. two fantastic players. They got one and two B. Let's put it that way because McDavid's above everybody else in the league. But they don't have goaltending. That's the one matchup. But still, you're going to have to deal with uh, the the greatest hockey player since Gretzky. Mm-hmm. Against uh, well, you, well, you have a crappy goalie there, a mid offense, a mid defense against a fantastic goalie. So I, I mean, that's a decent matchup. It's not great. Yeah, they play Colorado. They're dead. They yeah. win one game. They yeah. will win one game with Colorado. Ah, <laughs> uh, so but like I said, yeah, you pass the Lightning first. Though. But like I said, they beat the Lightning in the regular regular season twice. Mm-hmm. I'm you know, it's possible. The goaltending matchup is going to be insane in this series. It is Vasilevsky. Hasn't had the year he had previous year. He's still very, very good. And this is the, the, the time to knock off the narrative that the Rangers haven't beaten a starting goaltender, even though they beat Tristan Jari in Game 7. Stupid decision. They, they would have been better off, again, I'm going back a couple weeks here, but they would have been better off starting the backup for Jerry. But that's not my perspective. If you want to complain about how the Rangers haven't played any good goaltending, <laughs> shut up, because they have. <laughs> Rance is a very good goalie. He was great, yeah. He was great those first two games. They got to him. What, do you, what, what else do you want? Do you, do you want me to go get Jacques Plant like, back from the dead and stick him <laughs> in net for the next day? What do you want me to do? What do you want them to do? It's injuries. They happen. It's the playoffs. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So, you done with the Rangers talk? Is that, is that all you had to say? Um, there, was another, say? there was another th- funny thing, really. Yeah, quickly. go ahead. Andrew Kopp, who they yep. got at the deadline, one of the, one of the stipulations of the trade was, a first-round pick will be sent to Winnipeg if the Rangers make it to the conference finals. Oh, there it, it the, goes. <laughs> there goes the first round pick, and he goes to the GM, Chris Jury. Sorry about your first round pick. He said that? He said that. <laughs> so, it's fun. I it's like fun. that. It's I, I mean, this I season like has been a success either way. If they yeah, get, of course. It would be, uh, be upsetting and humiliating if they got swept, but it's still a success nonetheless. I mean, oh, yeah, the did. Hurricanes will be, something's going to happen there with their coach is gone. Or, hmm. We might have sent two teams into rebuild mode. Ooh. And that is that is... That's an accomplishment. That's an accomplishment, nonetheless. Yes, I. <laughs> I'm excited. Nice. You should be excited. This is this is big for New York. I'm excited for the Yankee game tonight too. Oh, <laughs> thank you for that. First, let's just say the phone number to join the show, 516-572-7440. Yankee fans, Met fans might want to chime in on this too, because Noah Syndergaard takes the hill in New York tonight. For the Angels against the Yankees in the Bronx. It's not the matchup I think Mets fans want with him in City Field, but he's coming back to New York. 
We'll we'll take care of him for you. We will, ba- I, it will be batting practice tonight. I, I I said to Addison before we got in here, like, please just destroy him tonight for we'll me, go, please. Yeah. What, what did Addison go? Yeah, we're gonna do it for you. Yeah, we're gonna do it for you. We'll take care of you. We'll take care for you. <laughs> no, he's laughing out there. They right will now. like I. <laughs> they should be. This should be a five ERA game for. They should score Ooh. five runs against Syndergaard tonight. Wow. I know they're injured, but he's That'd that be bad. Great. He's bad. Then he lineups out. You see it. I did not. So Take shall we look. give it? Shall we give it out as well? You give it out. Take a look. All right. Now, his Twitter is a little bit slow Let's today. Let's go on be at bat. It's there. Well, I just go to the Yankee lineup. I mean, they got good graphics when they release. Oh, there you go. That's cool. Lineup. <clears throat> I don't know. Be had it. So it's out. It's out. It's out. Item of the home stand. What wow. is it? It's just a hat. <laughs> What about is it the memorial they had the the camel? Uh, no, it's just the regular Yankees hat. Fifty nine, fifty nine, fifty. Yeah. Oh All right. God. Are we ready for the Yankee? Ah, We're ready. Just, it's not, not bad, right? This I think this is the best one they could do. It's so not far. bad. All right, leading off and playing third, which I'm getting more comfortable with him just being the third baseman because mm-hmm. Donaldson, an idiot. DJ Lemayhew <laughs> in center field, batting second, Aaron Judge. Batting third, first base, Anthony Rizzo. Mm-hmm. Again, I don't know why they're doing this, even though I know he's hot. He's hot. Mm, pause. Uh, <laughs> Gleyber Torres, batting cleanup, playing second base. In left field, Miguel Andujar. I love that he's getting these, this shot. I know mm-hmm. it's because everyone's injured. There's still potential there. The DH, Matt Carpenter, who's okay. That's, you know, what else are you going to do? Playing short, Isaiah Kinefalefa. Batting eighth, the catcher, Jose Trevino. I had a weird dream. Regarding him, okay, like he, was, I, like he was a serial killer. It was weird. <laughs> okay, and then in batting ninth and right field, Joey Gallo. So they're All still right. trotting Gallo out there, but good for them. Or would you rather Gallo or Hicks tonight? Uh, I'd rather just run out there with eight batters, you know, <laughs> and leave 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 left field wide open. That's fine, you know. <laughs> we'll still win. You have Judge cover left and center. There you go. Listen, he wants that forty million dollar year contract. Yeah, cover two he's got, positions. Aaron. He's got to do two positions. <laughs> we'll give you fifty if you play left and center. Um, <laughs> like, like an old beer league. With you left know, center I, and right I just center. I just forgot Montgomery is playing. Yep. So they'll lose tonight. The Yankees will <laughs> lose tonight. I completely forgot about that. And it sucks because so he's, they're not going to hit on Syndergaard. No, they'll hit on Syndergaard, but you know something will happen. They'll, they'll, some some guy will come out. Well, do you think pen. they'll score from Montgomery? Because that, 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 that goes against that whole well, train of let's, thought. Let's think about this, right? It's the un, you know it's the immovable object versus the <laughs> unstoppable force here. <laughs> Noah Syndergaard sucks, and he's given up. Would he give up six runs in that first inning a while ago? Yeah, in Texas. Yeah, in well, Texas. It was four. Then he was responsible for two guys on base. So. Right. But, yeah. Well, you know he can take the extra two runs there. Yeah. Versus the Yankees not giving Jordan Montgomery any run support. So something's got to break here. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what do you what do you think? Syndergaard has looked decent this year. He's a, he's a very up and down, like he was with the Mets towards the end. He was inconsistent. It's the same thing. He he's looked up and down this year. I mean, he's had great starts. He's he doesn't have good strikeout stuff at all, which is surprising for him. So I think if the Yankees just put the ball in play, they'll be fine. Matt, you wrote on this sheet that the. Who was going to take this series, the Yankees and the Angels, between two of the best teams in the American League? Yeah. So like, far. So far, yes. That's the important part. I feel like the Angels are going to crumble, but just so far, that, yeah, that's true. That's, no, when did that's that, exactly what, Hold going. on, hold on. I got ridiculed for that on Friday, saying they, they looked weird, or Thursday, whatever day that was, by you. You said, oh, I don't know. I told you there's something about fishy about it. this team. I thought about it. Right? right. There is something right. weird about, about this it. team. They shouldn't be that good. Something's fishy. They something got Mike Trout. Weird. Ah! There you go. <laughs> He's out of here. Uh, He's out of here, folks. I don't know. That wasn't that bad. (laughs) Really? Because I didn't expect it. I didn't think it was going to be that stupid, but hey. (laughs) It was pretty dumb. (laughs) Whatever. I mean, Trout's having a historic season on his own, but I mean, Otani's not going to do what he did last year this year again. No. He may have never done that again. I I think it's possible to get close to that area. I don't think he's going to exceed that. That may be the best season of his career right there. That's an amazing season. With everything taking into account, pitching, hitting, everything? You know, I I, I kind of like the uh, pitching matchup. Tyone against Otani. I kind of like that. Oh, when's that? Tomorrow? That is Thursday night. Tomorrow is Ooh. Cortez versus Reed Detmers. Oh, okay, the no-hitter guy. Yes. Yeah, okay. So two lefties tomorrow. Then you got Otani and Tyone. That's nice. It's not bad. It's an interesting series. I mean, this should be if fun. The, if the Yankees... Were how they were playing. I mean, they would sweep the series if this was, 
You know, they have the lineup healthy. Yeah. I think they could sweep this series, but I think two out of three is possible. I kind of want to go to a Yankee uh, you know, game now because it, I, I've, always, I've always liked seeing Mike Trout play in person. Like, it's one of those guys you just got to watch I in mean, your lifetime. I, I went to a game when he was Mike Trout was there. He went like 0 for 4 that night. Yeah, I, I I went to one game Mike Trout ever played. It was in Boston. He had three strikeouts throw for four. So we're bad luck for Mike Trout. Maybe we should go. <laughs> I should buy tickets for the whole series. He <laughs> <You> should. Um, <laughs> is it is it like greedy of me to say like I expect two wins out of the series? <sighs> it's not greedy. I think you'll win tomorrow with Nestor. You should. Yes, you should. The AL Cy Young. You should win with him, and Detmer has had the I one good night. I think you can win with Tyone. I really think you can win Against with Tyone. Against Otani? Because mm. I don't know how long in the game Otani's going to go for. That's true. He hasn't pitched long in the game this year. And that bullpen, you know. I don't trust that bullpen at all. No. So I think it's possible. If Tyone can, I mean, he went seven innings against the Rays. Did he go eight? Well, eight innings, but he pitched into the seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That always throws me off. So he went eight innings. I th- you know, if he can do that against the Rays, I, I, I'd say it's possible against the Angels. Angels, right? have, I think the Angels have a better lineup than the Rays this year. Maybe this is the maybe this is the series that makes them crumble. Maybe it is the Angels. Maybe it is. I mean, there's there's a lot of factors here. It's a big series for both sides. I mean, I mean, the Yankees they, they have nothing left to prove. They're the best team in baseball. That that's just no no question. I don't know. I mean, that. I still I still feel, feel the like Dodgers, the Dodgers could take the a Dodgers, series against yeah. the Yankees. Did you see far. the Dodgers last night against the Pirates? No, I didn't. Oh my god, the Pirates like were like clawing their way back from like a big Dodger lead, and the Pirates ended up winning that game. It was in Dodger Stadium, but the Pirates scored a run in the ninth, and the Dodgers couldn't come back. Interesting team because Freddie Freeman like booted a ball right at him. He was hit hard, but right at him, he boots it. Then tries to throw home for some reason and completely misses. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I and mean, there are Dodgers fans going, "Oh, Freddie Freeman moment," and I'm like, "Shut up! <laughs> He's your marquee free agent. Yeah, what shut are you, up! What are you bullying him He's for? He's been here for two months. Shut up!" <laughs> Yo, know, Dodger fans are never pleased, are they? No, they just uh, wow. They're like the Laker fans. Well, yeah, same. same but yeah, guy. yeah, same exact. Thing. Well, I mean, the Laker fans are like the Cowboy Duke, I, whatever. I fans. saw <laughs> something. <laughs> So Yankees, stupid. Whatever. I saw something so stupid. I forget who posted it. <laughs> who would Laker fans rather be rooting for? And then we'll get to the yeah, yeah. finals later. But was who would the Curry Lakers, or the, the, the Celtics? The, the Celtics or the Warriors? If you're a Lakers fan, you have to root for the Warriors. Of course yeah. you do. They're not That's really not a rival. Even a question. But you know they have this portion, the significant the LeBron portion. versus Curry. Exactly. This portion of Laker fans that's just married to LeBron James. Yeah. Everything that he does. So you know a, a big portion of them, Laker fans, quote unquote, is gonna root for the Celtics. You know. Eh, those are the fake Laker fans. That's how you find them. Exactly. I don't agree that's with it. That's how you find them. Uh, nobody would agree with it because you can't root for your right. It's the same the as the Islanders with we were talking about with the Rangers in the line. Yeah, same, same thing. Same exact line of thing. Right, like it makes no sense. Like I, to I understand, like that. in that you know, they're coming for a legacy in some point. Mm-hmm. But I think the legacy is better than seeing your most hated rival rival win. Yeah, by I mean, far. And then having to deal with the Ranger fans. Islander fans hate Ranger fans. I think it goes the other way too. So I mean, they're they're tolerable Islander fans. They are. They're there tolerable are. fans in every fan base. But some fan base. I'm not. I'm not going to start yelling at some guy where, with a Islanders bumper sticker. I'm not going to do that. But on the other hand. <laughs> Where are you going with this? I don't know. I was trying to go back. Oh, okay. Transition to the Mets back, here. back to the okay. Back the to the Mets. Mets. I throw a brick at a car window with a Mets sticker on the back. <laughs> How about that? There's your Mets. What did you do? I'm I'm doing a thing. I'm just okay. I'm just doing a thing. I mean, yeah. but the Mets, baby, love the Mets. All right, baby, let's go get a home run, baby. Love MVP the Mets. MVP or no? <laughs> MVP. Oh. MVP. The dumbest hashtag <sighs> on Twitter yet. Oh, shut up. He's putting up MVP numbers. Yeah. You're saying the word plays dumb or the concept? No, is the, dumb? the concept's dumb. Oh come Let's, on! Uh, if, I if, think if, the concept's clever. If you ask me. No, okay. we're talking about Pete being MVP. You think that's dumb? I mean, he's not going to win MVP. Why not? It's so early in the season, and he didn't have a, you know he had a cold slump. He's there. got he what four to eight RBIs, and we're a quarter of the way through the season. Oh, okay, we'll see. That's amazing. I mean, we can see Matt because <laughs> trust me. A lot of people in this Mets team like to go on cold streaks. I'm I just agree. Saying, I'm saying if he keeps this up, if he he's keeps the MVP. it up, sure. But I don't. We think don't he's know right now, up. and that's not a shot. I'm just All right, saying. No, I, I can see what you're saying. He's fallen into slumps before. I get it. I get what you're saying. How about plumber? What? How about plumber who we made fun of on the show because you want me to clip that? I didn't know what show it was from. No, it I was no it, idea. You know what it was from? 
What? It was from some of the uh, basketball halftime show. Oh, did, yeah. Oh, I could have found that then, man. It's all right. Oh. Works out good. I mean, you, you pick up a first round pick of the, the, the Cardinals, which didn't turn out. I mean, yeah. You take the hits when you can get them, right? Yeah, I mean, that's rare the Mets hit on a guy like that. Like, if someone else's first round pick that failed there and is good on the Mets, that's very, very rare. Um, it sounds funny, but yeah. it sounds funny in hindsight now. Yeah. <laughs> The one of my main concerns about this Mets team was obviously like the backup outfielder. I wasn't mm-hmm. sure on Jankowski. You know, I I thought it was gonna be like a soft hitting kind of guy. He I think was, he's great, but now he's hurt. He, exactly. He was phenomenal. Great start to the season. He's now hurt. So you call up this plumber kid. Yep. Who I, I think nothing of. I, I'm not expecting anything from this kid. I love his walk up music and he changed it and I'm upset. He did that was weird. Like he changed it. If you're watching the game yesterday, S You're expecting oh, Super Mario No. Yeah. <laughs> SNY like cut to the audio of the walk up music and it was something like completely different. Yeah, they played the Super Mario music after his home run is what I heard. Yeah, they did yeah. that the first the, his first home run and then Yeah, the second one was just, you know, whatever, but they were they were blowing him out that game, but yeah. yeah t- to my point, I was not expecting anything from these guys, and like the Mets had a good bench mob last season. Oh yeah, like every now and then they were hitting clutch pinch hit home runs. I miss you, Jose Peraza. But <laughs> you do not. No, not really. I, <laughs> He's a Yankee you know, now, isn't he? I think so. Yeah. Right. Right. Isn't Jose Peraza a Yankee, Anthony? Well, Oswald Peraza. No, Jose Peraza Jose from the Mets Peraza. last year, He's, second baseman. I don't. The veteran somewhere. second baseman. I thought it was a Yankee. I, think I don't it, know, but my it. my point being, so many like clutch pinch hit home runs from him and the other some of the other guys like Brandon Drury. Yeah. Oh but, God. <laughs> yeah. Right. But this year's team is like when you're expecting the fall to happen, mm-hmm. or you're you're saying like Luis Guillorme hitting three sixty. He's only oh, five hundred. Who hit five hundred in May? May's over now today. But absolutely ridiculous. No, and it's no, like May is still today. You, you, after well, there's May's a game over. tonight, Matt. He could be batting <laughs> seven fifty, <laughs> Matt, if he wanted to. <laughs> I don't think that high, but sure. Uh, you had the wrong Peraza, by the way. Oh, I did. Oswald Peraza. Okay, different Peraza. My bad. I saw. There's this interesting tweet from Andy Martino. So <sighs> Dallas, what? You're not a fan? I yeah, hate him. Handsome. Oh, you'll love this then. Okay. Dallas Keuchel. Clears, I hate him more. Clears. <laughs> waivers and is a free agent. A no brainer no. for the Mets. No, in my no. opinion. See, we 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 discussed this a little bit. We did yesterday. So we you're you're talking about it on the show, didn't we? Yeah. Did we? I, th- I don't know. We talked about it at some point. I, he was brought up, but I said no. Really? I, I I it's weird. I said I could see him as a Yankee if he shaves the beard. Obviously. Oh, please. You wouldn't take extra starting pitching help at this point. He's batting practice. I feel the Yankees can figure him out though. The Yankees seem to figure out pitchers like that. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I want to see him be bad for them. That's not what I'm saying at all. The Yankees tend to figure out guys like that and make it like, like Nestor Cortez. What was he before he was with the Yankees? Nay. No, I I'm, I'm not slandering him. I, 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 I understand like he was Yankees, up and down yes. between the minor leagues and major. I understand that. But if I'm you, I, I take the extra help. No, he, he had a 70 even already for, this even, year. even for one game. Just see how it goes out. Well, then That's again, a loss. I, then again, you know. He's got other options, too. He, he can, does. He's a former Cy Young Award winner. Not what he once was, but he's... No, he's, yeah, definitely not. Not even close. I mean, I said last week that this mess rotation, they have a... Just looking at it, if they go deep enough into games, because that's the main issue, right? Mm-hmm. I think these guys can perform, but you don't want to go five, six innings every night. Well, six innings is okay. I'll take that. You don't want to go four, four and two-thirds, these five-inning outings, yeah, yeah. and burn out the bullpen. That's my only concern. Like, Taiwan Walker looked good the other day, but it was for five innings, you know? Exactly. Like, you, you just got to... Anybody that's in the rotation now for the New York Mets, just hold the fort down, you know, tread water, and try to go as deep as you can. I'll yep. take a I'll take a six inning start if it's three or four runs because of how the Mets are hitting. Yeah, I'll take that at, easily. Oh easily. yeah, it, it, it's incredible. Just it's something about the impact the Buck Showalter and the hitting coach has had on this team that just the pitching staff is a little banged up, but these this team's ability to hit hit in clutch spots, runners in the scoring position, been a complete one eighty from the previous Mets teams. Mm-hmm. And Lindor, let me let me say something about Francisco Lindor. Oh, because everybody was killing this guy. I know <laughs> last year was last year. It's you know yeah. he had to get used to the New York market. Yeah, he started off the season well, hit a rut, and then everybody went back to killing him, just killing him. <laughs> and what does he do? He bounces back, and uh, don't look now, but he's top five in the league in RBIs. <laughs> Francisco Lindor, and who's number one on RBIs oh, right now? That'd be MVP. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 
Oh, you gonna? <laughs> how about this, really quickly? Because that was a shot. Um, <laughs> oh God, Matt, your favorite baseball player of all time joined uh, social media. I saw that. I saw that. Did you see the tweet about someone calling him overrated? No, I didn't see that. Oh, I gotta find this right now. Did he respond to it? Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, credit to Jeter. This was hilarious. He's already a Twitter veteran. That that's a perfect. You saw this, Josh? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Let's find this. It was like an old tweet too. It was like some random dude with a verified check because there's plenty of them on Twitter. Just random people that have verified checks for no reason. But this guy said like, "Oh, Jeter's <laughs> See, Jeter's no, the most no, hold overrated. on. That, I got a problem with Jeter here. Here's a, here's a problem. Here's a, here's a little problem. You see it? The, no, no, no. The, the personality. He's got like such a Twitter personality, right? Yeah. But but dead stare personality in the locker room, 2009, all his career. No personality. <laughs> on, once he gets you on Twitter, wise cracks. You see him in the new Subway commercial they have out? No, I didn't see it. He's in, the, he's in with like Charles Barkley and Steph Curry. Derek Jeter's in there now. I remember. This is it. This is it. I would let's, disagree with that. Let's but. let's let's turn back the clock here a little bit, right? I remember the the Ford commercials where they go, go to Ford.com slash Derek Jeter. We got all these like win prizes. Little games on the Ford website. Website would never work. And every time I see that, I don't know. I just kind of had a flashback. What, what do you say? Oh, I've got it. Here we go. So um, this guy, Nick Adams, I don't know who that is. I think he's a reporter or something. Okay. Some rando. Yeah, he's verified, though. And he goes, um, on 3-16-22, March 16th, Derek Jeter is the most overrated player in MLB history, which I agree with. But moving forward. Hold on. Oh, <laughs> it, is it like a guy in a tie? No. Oh, with that guy, Yes. <laughs> Him? Who is that He's guy? He's a clown. Don't really? Even. Yes. So he tweeted that. Then Jeter tweets a picture of him signing that guy's jersey while it's on his body and goes, this you, Nick? <laughs> He's a Hold fan. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. He's a fan. He's a fan. Turning fan. Point USA. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> One flag USA. I don't know what that is. I don't want to know. Yeah, yeah don't. Yeah, don't, don't even. Slope. 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 <laughs> okay. Best selling author. But yeah, Derek Jeter's on Twitter now, huh? Best selling author endorsed by a former president. Okay. Which president? 45. Matt. Oh, really? You got the phone ringing. It's probably an angry Jeter fan. If this is Derek Jeter, I'm quitting the show forever. That's on record. <laughs> All right. We, we, up, <laughs> What's up, Jeets? <laughs> we, we do have a phone call on the line. Caller, you're on WHPC Sports Talk. What's up? Yo, yo. What's up, Matt? Yes. It's yes. <laughs> So, one quick thing. That tweet was actually proven to uh, not be real. It was, oh! Uh, uh, yeah. I saw that on Twitter uh, earlier, but yeah, they, they disproved it. Okay, so, thank you for the week. update, Justin. I appreciate the help. <laughs> yes. And uh, I couldn't disagree with you more on Jeter being overrated, Matt. Couldn't disagree and with this- me more? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Me and, Anthony, me and Anthony went over Jeter. His career on the Radio Rumble, Saturdays 12 to 2. Okay. And, just... uh, we, came to, <laughs> we came to the conclusion that he is, uh, you know, one of the all-time greats. Deservedly oh. so. Don't, I mean, oh, he's no. He's oh, no. Don't go, oh. He is one of the all-time greats. Stop. Even if you want to call him overrated, he's still one of the all-time greats. I'm don't not even, Matt. Bad. I'm not Matt, calling him bad. Don't, I never don't once even. Called him a bad don't even. You can't. You can't be up here with a straight face and go, uh, because he's not one of the all-time greats. Sure, call him overrated. Whatever. He is still one of the Define all-time. Define all-time greats. <laughs> I, I are you, uh, no, 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 no. You're not doing this. I understand you're a salty <laughs> Met fan, and the Mets. I'm sorry. I know you, Josh. You're a Met fan. <laughs> this is not towards you. I understand you're a Met fan, and you've had no success for the entirety of your lifetime. And that's okay. <laughs> Guess what? I uh, well, Guess I'm, a, I'm an X fan Guess too, so I understand that. <laughs> but at least my baseball team has done something. I don't grasp for straws, calling one of the all-time greats overrated. Mike, why'd you have to call out today if you're listening right now? <laughs> what? Who's? Uh, see, he's deflecting what? because he knows I'm right. I'm not. Uh, okay, stop. Anyways, uh, Justin, how about those Rangers, though? Okay, you're going to keep Justin. <laughs> big, win. big win yesterday. You know, it was just that Dix, big fan of Dix. And uh, I was looking for a... <laughs> 4.30? <laughs> I was looking for a Rangers shirt, and they got nothing in my size. So, uh, unfortunately, I had to get another Mets shirt. But, uh, yeah, Rangers, baby. Can't wait for Wednesday. What yeah. about, a, what about a, a Rangers hat? You can get a Rangers hat. They didn't have. They don't, I like the stretch hats. They don't have any. Uh, Go to Rangers Lids. Stretch. They'll have it. Lids. Okay. They'll have Go it. Dick, 
you don't have the stretching. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Do we gotta <laughs> do we gotta like do that? No, we don't. It's fine. All right. I think he's had enough. I think he's had enough. Well, All right. Thank you for the call, Justin. All right. That is Justin Greenberg. You can hear him on the morning madhouse and the radio rumble Saturday is twelve to two, so <laughs> Is All the right. AC on in here? It is on. It's on like seventy two. Give me degrees. the remote. We're gonna get we're gonna All fix right. this thing. Someone get me a soldering gun. We're fixing this thing right now. <laughs> what? A solder it's the thing that connects wire. It's like yeah, connects yeah. wire so they It's on. It's on seventy two degrees. Well, why is it's gotta be on like fifty nine, dude? No, are you kidding me? We're not wearing Rangers jerseys in here. So you're cool right now. I'm fine right now. I'm wearing a t shirt and shorts. Well, you're not getting the remote because I right. control the air conditioning. All I'm right. sorry. <laughs> All right, I didn't want to talk Jeter today. I didn't want to talk about that. Yeah, but you went there. I just said you he joined social Twitter. media. No, the guy went there. I didn't have to go there. Okay, whatever. Okay, I'm just saying it's a fake tweet anyway. That makes me upset. That'd be a great tweet by Jeter if that was real. Are you confident with Trevor Williams tonight? No, no, no. I mean, I'm confident in the Mets beating up on Patrick Corbin. It's going to be like a shootout. But that—that's the thing with this Mets team. If they're scoring the runs that they are at this rate, it's not really going to matter. The Mets got to score like seven tonight to win. I really believe that. Well, I don't think Trevor Williams is going to be as bad as this kid. No, 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 not just him. It'll be him giving up four. He'll be out by the third. Then the bullpen will come and give up two more, and then... He still won't be that Sapucky cat. He'll be I'm aware, but he'll give up at least four runs tonight. I I could bet money on that right now. Four runs, I'll take. Four runs, four runs. Do it right now. I will actually take. Bet on that? Do it right now. What, bet on giving up four runs? Yeah, do it right now. Can I even bet on that? Is it possible? Yeah, probably. Over or under. Rondas. You can bet on anything in FanDuel now. Oh, FanDuel doesn't recognize me as a person. What? Th- they're, they're like, we can't identify you. And I'm like, I gave you my information. Why can't you? They, they I, can't, like, we get on who you are. They can't okay. identify you. Yeah, like, this is, you're not a real person. Really? Because I'm trying to <laughs> give you money right now. You're not a real person. That's all. Yeah, I don't y'all understand. Y'all don't want my money, FanDuel? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's why I use DraftKings. But we're not plugging betting apps here. Until we get the sponsorship. Right? No, we need a DraftKings sponsorship, man. Or FanDuel or something. We need some sports book to sponsor us. Hey, something. Any sports books out there, 516-572-7440. Call us up. Sponsor us, please. We could probably find somebody. I'll do some digging for you. Okay. I'll, we could probably find somebody. <laughs> Make sure it's legal, please. Oh, of course. Okay. Of course. You know I'm all about the legalities, man. Yeah, of course. You of know, course. We, we don't condone legal gambling here at WHPC. No, definitely. No, we do e- not. You mean illegal gambling? I said illegal. I thought you said legal. I said illegal. Okay. okay. This thing isn't working, by the way. Yes, it is. It's on. It's moving. Listen, for the uh, next fundraiser, let's, <laughs> let's, get, a better, let's get a better air conditioner. We have a new one in the production room. I know. It's very good. It's fantastic. Okay, moving forward now. You know, I'm... What? This Mets team, I, I love everything they're doing, like I always say, but I'm I'm holding on to that. Because when, when I love a team, right, all my favorite teams, I'm extremely obnoxious when they're doing well and they're actually contention. <laughs> so I'm actually holding out until they play this series against the Dodgers. Oh, yeah, I was going to bring that up I'm, next. I thought that was my next point. I mean, there's the Dodgers, there's the Padres, the end. We've been talking about it for a month now. Yeah, but the, the big one is the Dodgers. Like That's say, huge. Say we go in there against a team with the, a gazillion run differential, and we take like three out of four. That, that is the best stat in baseball, you know. One run differential. Oh, the, the best stat in baseball. Absolutely. Don't, That's how you measure a don't, team. Don't. <laughs> don't do it. Is he not right? Don't do it. Is he incorrect? <laughs> just, just, okay. okay. But yeah, <laughs> like, if we go in there and take three out of four... I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in here on Monday, and I promise you, I'm going full obnoxious Mets fan. All right, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. All right, fine. I mean, I'll, I'll be with you. I'll wear a Mets jersey, Mets hat, whatever. I got Mets shoes. I don't care. If we go in there with, and again, this is hypothetical, and it's given the state of three our game rotation, series, right? Is it three or four? I oh, I gotta check now. Regardless, if they if they win the series with half a rotation. And th- if it's lo- four and they split, I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it absolutely. But say they win it, they win a game. I'll be happy. I won't be ecstatic. I'll be happy. You can't. If the Mets are doing this well, you can't say, "Well, I just need a game." I get the rotation is what the it Dodgers is. are a juggernaut, Josh. I, I understand. Okay, if, so you're saying as long as we don't get swept, it's fine. Yes, that's what I'm saying. All right. That's, that's as long as the Mets don't get swept, I'm totally okay with anything that happens in this series. I know the Dodgers are a juggernaut, like you said, but I just can't see this Mets team getting swept. Now, if I jinx them, y'all can come in. They here haven't been swept yet. Yeah, y'all can. They come also in. only swept one team. And that's the Phillies this past weekend. That is an oddity to me. Like they, they've, they've won so many series, they haven't swept anybody. They haven't. They've only swept one team. Yeah. That's, to answer your question, four games set against LA. 
All right, so, you know, a lot of Mets fans' best case scenario would be, you know, maybe get a split. I'm saying the way this Mets team's rolling and the way they just find ways to win, this is a great litmus test for the to start the month of June. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You want to, like, the great start, April, May, great start. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing given the circumstances. Mm-hmm. If they start off June, this, this, this June stretch is going to be so difficult. If they start off the right track against this Dodgers team, <laughs> brace, buckle up. It's, it's going to get obnoxious real fast. Breaking <laughs> breaking news. What do you got? Not the Mets. Bad? I mean, maybe. Read it. Roster move. Oh, oh I know this already. Yeah. Dominic Smith moved to Triple A or option to Triple A. I saw that. And who, they called up. I don't even know who they called up. Some guy I've never heard of in my life. I don't, Adonis Medina. Yeah, I don't know who that is. He a pitcher? What is he? Yeah, Buck's uh, explanation was, "Oh, we need pitching up here." Okay, I I, I can respect Listen, that. Now, Dom's now, not playing now like he, a major leaguer right now. Dom can be a full time starter now in Syracuse. Gets what he <laughs> wants, right? <laughs> yeah, just move him somewhere to be a full time starter. That makes sense. Yeah, wish it would have worked out. Might still. You never know. Right? I I think he's getting traded by the deadline. I don't think he'll be back up here for a little while. If he does, it'll be his trade bait. I don't think he's staying with his team till the end of the year. Interesting. I love Dom Smith as a person. I think as a player this year, he's not great, obviously. He was great in 2020, but that was a shortened year, whatever you want to say about that. I don't know. I, I, I don't know where to fall on Dom Smith because he just he gives you reasons to love him. Then he just crushes your soul after that. <laughs> Can I ask you a question yeah. about the, the 2020 no fan season? Yeah. Because we talk about the NBA bubble a lot and how much of that yep. was real, how much of that was fake. From, like, you're a bigger, like, baseball head than me. Mm-hmm. What goes into, like, your thought process when you say, oh, I don't take 2020 that seriously? I would take any season except for the NFL seriously in terms of COVID. Without fans, it's different. But I'm like, how can you say that about the NFL if, if real well, home, no, no, no. home field advantages were taken away? The NFL is different because I mean their season was barely affected. No, no like what, I mean, no, wait, 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 when oh, did I so, football that one time? So you're going the route of how many players miss games because of COVID. That's where you're going. That and because it was a shortened season in the MLB, in the NBA, they had the break in the season. Then they went to the bubble. You know, it was weird stuff went on, and you know momentum's a big thing in sports. And I feel like sixty games are hard to get momentum. The Dodgers were just better that year. Fine, they win. That's fine. Okay. They traded for Mookie Betts. They built a super team. Whatever. Yeah, the, the team that they built is like really because it was still seven game series in the bubble, right? Yes, it was. I guess because the shortened season, I, I can see it was weird. Part. There was like a three game series wild card thing that we're gonna have this year. It was similar to that. The Marlins made the playoffs. It was really weird. Yeah, that's really weird. That's yeah, that's really, why that's I don't really count strange. much of that year. It was really weird. Okay. The Mets finished in last place. That's not weird, but <laughs> it happened. Yeah, it wasn't weird back then. Yeah, it's just because I Dom Smith. Great 2020 season. Mm-hmm. And then, again, fans come back in. We'll never know the type of impact that has on like one guy against another. Yep. But he's been just... Hasn't been the same player at all. Hasn't even approached his 2020 self since then. No. I mean, he had, what, over the a 900 talented, OPS in 2020. Weird. The talent is there. Yeah. It's you clearly it. there. You see it. And I wonder how much of it is, you know... Maybe the fans, but also mentally not getting routinely. That's being true. The first baseman. They had a, not even first base. He was played, played primarily left field in DH in 2020. Right. So but even I, yeah. maybe the position move as well. I don't know. I mean, Dom Smith, I think, does need regular at bats, and hopefully he'll get into a groove in AAA and then come back up and start lighting the world on fire. I'm okay with him staying with the Mets if he can produce. I have no problem with that if he's producing, but if not, then get him out of here. What if you moved him to third base and got... He's a lefty. I'm just saying. <laughs> get okay. your favorite player out of here. Ooh, JD? Yeah. Oh, God. Escobar's playing third now. Well, him as well. You're not very fond of him as well. I, I have no problem with Escobar. Right. I never... I never. I mean, I get he was in a stump, but I never had a problem with him. He's been consistent everywhere he's been his whole career. Yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll turn back around. He'll figure it out. I, I never had a problem with him. He's great in the clubhouse. The guys love him. Yeah, J- J.D. Davis and Dom Smith, they really seem like the two type of guys that just need at-bats every day. You know, D- J.D. got regular at-bats in 2019, a great he season. He was fantastic. Fantastic. Dom Smith, same thing in 2020. So say you make a move and you trade these guys to places where they can get regular at-bats. If, <laughs> if, if they produce, can you really be mad at that? Because there's no. no spot for them. No, yeah. like There's a log jam in a lot of places with this Mets team, which is what you want. It's a good problem. Yeah. 
you want to have an, you well, know, it, a lot of you good know, players. It's a good problem for you, but it's a bad problem for the Yankees. You know, having a logjam at certain positions. I feel like the Yankees' logjam is different, though, because that's guys that aren't producing that are on big exactly. contracts. Sure, I was going to say the big difference is the money. The money. And also the talent level there. And yeah, also, like, I feel a logjam is good in a situation where, where too many good players and you can't fit them all in. Exactly. That's great. Like, the Mets starters are producing. The Yankees starters, like, the, anybody that starts in the outfield between Gallo and Hicks, you know they're going to be, that's not really what you want as an everyday player. And you're forced to play them every day. Mm-hmm. So, With yeah. the money they make. Don Smith's on a rookie deal. So yeah. is J.D. Davis. Fair enough. So, yeah. It's a little different. Good for you guys. Good for you. <laughs> and your record's still better than ours, so, you know. Weird, right? Weird how that shakes out. That's not weird. The Yankees built a good team this year. Yeah, they're they're producing. You know, it's not it's not that out of the pick out of the question. Not crazy. I was wrong once again. You were, and I'm sure you're glad you are. I'm very glad. <laughs> Uh, 516-572-7440 is the number to join the show. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. It's Matt Leonard, and Anthony Deus, and Joshua Umahi here with you right now. I want to get one more quick point on the Mets. Josh, have you seen the comp that people are saying for Nick Plummer's swing? No, I haven't heard anything about that. Have you seen enough of his at-bats to see what his swing looks like? Yeah. People say he swings just like Michael Conforto when I see it. Oh, yes. yes. On the home run he hit, I'm like, that's Conforto's yes. swing. Oh, From my the God. follow through, too. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's actually a really good observation. Whoever said that, yeah. That's... Someone tweeted that and that went crazy in Mets Twitter, and I was like, oh, man, he's Michael Conforto. <laughs> he just can't leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Michael Conforto is. <sighs> Invaded Nick Plummer's mental. This guy's more lovable than Conforto. He walked up to the Super Mario Brothers theme. Like, come on. And it's funny because I thought that was going to be the most notable thing about him. <laughs> yeah, bro. I thought, I thought it was going to be that. He never came back. Yeah, exactly. It's I like, thought it was going to be like a Travis Blankenhorn. Like, we never hear from him again. Like, <laughs> it was going to be a, a Mets trivia question one day. Who yeah. is the Mets player that, that came up to bat with the Super Mario Brothers music? Like well, SNY yeah, trivia, whatever. In get, 15 years. You hear, you hear Keith like, I don't know. <laughs> and nobody would get it right. I don't know, Gary. I don't know who that could be. And then, oh, it's Nick Oh, Plummer. wow. That is actually identical. Right? Yeah. That is actually identical. How crazy is that? <laughs> let's, let's, hope, let's hope we can channel a little 2015 Conforto. Let's hope we can channel a little bit of that. You know? <laughs> oh, boy. <sighs> I, I, uh, Justin is texting us weird things. Okay. I don't need to. No. He doesn't, we don't need any more of that. <laughs> no. You listen Thursday mornings, you hear about Crank's Collectibles. Crank's Collectibles. And the yeah. nightmare over in South Hempstead where he lives. <laughs> Speaking about 2015, <laughs> yeah. those Warriors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's get to the Warriors now and the Celtics in the NBA Finals. So the Finals don't start until Thursday. We're going to talk about it now because we didn't talk about it much yesterday. Warriors enter as the betting favorites to win the whole thing. I'm not surprised. Right, least so. I'm not surprised at all. They have the experience there. They have the veterans. They have you know all the guys that have been there before and done that. So that makes sense to me. But I want to ask you specifically, Josh, you've watched a lot more of the NBA playoffs than any of us. <laughs> okay. Who do you think, besides the betting odds, who do you think really has the edge in terms of like the player personnel? This is a harder question than a lot of people think because the Warriors have won championships in the recent past. The Celtics are that young team that's just broken through, right? But if you just look at the personnel, what you asked, like Mm -hmm. from the Celtics, what they've done from where they were in the start of the season, January to where they are now, like they had Dennis Schroeder on the roster. They had Josh. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. forgot about that. Oh, yeah. Josh Richardson on the roster. Guys like that. (laughs) And it's Cantor. Slash oh freedom God. on the roster. Yeah, right, and this freedom, that's right. And oh, we know, like, these are not guys you would associate with defense, right? <laughs> no. But what they do, they roll with Marcus Smart full-time at point guard. They shorten the rotation in the playoffs. Yep. And you look at, like, their 10 guys versus the Warriors' 10 guys. This is a lot more of an even matchup than a lot of people think. Now, I'll still go Warriors probably. Mm-hmm. But the Celtics, I mean, if you look at, just their starters. We'll start with the starters. They got depth, too. Incredible. You know, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, we know about them. But what they have that's really interesting, the the bigs, Al Horford and Robert Williams, these are guys, usually if you, have, you start two big guys in today's NBA, and we credit Steph Curry for changing the game, it's like, if you play two big guys in today's NBA, it's like, you're not going to be that good of a team. Well, Horford can shoot. Exactly. That's the thing. Horford can shoot, and they both 
Horford and Williams can defend guys in the perimeter. Yep. They're not you're not like uh easy pickings when they're out in the perimeter guarding guards and quick guys like Steph Curry or Klay Thompson. Yep. So that's what's really interesting about this. I'll I give the edge to the Warriors in six, like I said. Mm-hmm. But the Celtics, this is going to be in terms of just stylistically the competitiveness of these games, it's going to be a phenomenal series. I really can't wait for it. I agree. And Curry is entering as the betting favorite to win his first finals MVP. Can, I ask, all- can I ask you about that real quick? Yeah, because I got a different pick if I had to pick some money. Interesting. But, like, does Steph Curry really need a finals MVP? No. <laughs> like, I, I, because. A lot of people really go by. I think that that award, in terms of legacy, is so overblown. Yeah, because I can go. I can give you countless examples. Like, look at Andre Iguodala. Iguodala <laughs> won one. I think Larry Bird lost one to Cornbread Maxwell. Yes. Whatever that is. Yes. Casual fans wouldn't really know that, but again, there there have been stars that haven't won every Finals MVP that they've for a championship that they've won. So a guy like Steph, who impacts the game. He gets other guys involved, gets Iguodala a ton of open shots, gets Kevin Durant a bunch of open shots, which Kevin Durant is actually arguing about live on Twitter right now, as usual. Okay. But, yeah, it, it's, it's just, he, from that standpoint, the way he impacts the game, gets everybody involved, I don't really think he needs that finals MVP, but people love trophies. People live by how many trophies a guy has, how yeah. many MVPs a guy has, and how many <laughs> championships, how many fi- all this stuff. It, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, Anthony wants to do something for us. Okay, this is my prediction. Ready? Your prediction right now? Go for it. So this was taken back in nineteen eighty something. This is vetted, right? You 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 check this out? Yes. Okay. Just in case, I think it is. What do you that, got? Look, see, that's fine. That's all they say? Yeah. Okay, play it. Who's gonna win it? The Celtics. Because there's no other reason why. We're gonna leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> As some guy you actually have the, the Celtics. I like the Celtics in six. Oh, but that's like not a bad prediction, though. It's that's not, not but it's against all. like the public. I like that. We're fading the public. <laughs> We're fading the public. The Celtics can win this series. That's the thing. Whoever well, Mike picks just go the other way, right? <laughs> Is that who he picked yesterday? I, I don't I think he picked the Warriors. I did. I meant like... Yeah, he picked the Warriors, yeah. Oh, well. You and Mike dis- no other disagree reason on why. everything. Yeah. <laughs> you and Mike um, disagree on everything. Not everything. But intuition tells you. Big games. <laughs> Fade the Merlot. Fade the Merlot, right? <laughs> Super Bowl. What do you pick? Yep. That lost. Mm-hmm. What do I pick? There you Bengals go. Bengals plus four. That won. Um, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting series, like an it actually be, like yeah. fun series to watch. It's not going to be like oh the Celtics. I mean the rather the Warriors are going to steamroll the Celtics. It's going to be a competitive series. Well, I like it. You got the Celtics winning. Who's your Finals MVP then? Tatum. Tatum. Tatum? Okay. Come on. I, I I got a a sneaky one. Robert Williams. Oh. So as a, a dark horse, I like Robert Williams for the MVP. My finals MVP prediction, if I had to make one, Clay Thompson. That'd be cool. That'd be amazing. I want to see Clay win it so bad. And Steph doesn't win one at all. <laughs> That'd be funny. C- can I, the two guys you just picked, I, I actually really love those picks. Because Robert Williams, his ability, I think Draymond was on a podcast I was listening earlier. Of course he was. Yes. <laughs> He, that's what he does. He's part-time NBA player, part-time influencer. It's really yeah, annoying. There are like five of them now. <laughs> yeah, you old got Draymond. Man, old Pat man Bev. in the three. Well, JJ, I like J.J. Reddick's podcast. No, I do. It's, you know, it's just interesting. Patrick Beverly's going to get one soon. Oh, yeah, that's definitely on the way this summer. Mm-hmm. But Robert Williams, his, his ability to guard guys one-on-one and erase mistakes. When you have a great defensive center like that, again, the Celtics have great guys on the perimeter, so it's really less so. But when you have a guy just sitting in the paint back there just waiting to erase every shot and block every shot and make things difficult in the paint, it's really a great thing to have. And yep. Clay, Clay Thompson, I mean, because you know the Celtics and Ime Duke are going to just throw body after body at Steph Curry. I'm not going to let him get off. And Clay Thompson can get a shot off 6-7, quick twitch release. Yep. He can get a shot off against anybody. You know, I, so if I've, those shots are falling. I've been thinking, too. Marcus Smart getting underneath Draymond's sc- skin. I think that's a possibility. Oh, absolutely. If you, mm. if you remember, a few if you remember the Steph Curry had an injury to close out the regular season, and it was because Marcus Smart kind of slid into his yeah, leg. Yeah, yeah. And Steve Kerr was like, "Oh, he broke the code. You don't do that, Marcus Smart." And you know, 
It, <laughs> so that's a big. It's a kind of a storyline heading into these finals. Yeah. Then Jordan Poole grabs John Morant's knee, and he's like, oh. "I don't know what happened." <laughs> Can we talk about that? I no, like we didn't no, we, we talked about that enough. But it's like, why? We, we killed him for that. You killed who? Jordan Poole. For tugging John Morant's knee? Yes. I'm not getting into this. This is old. I'm, I'm no doctor. 80s. I'm no doctor, but somebody, nobody's ever tugged my knee, and it, it, it bruised I, it. No, no, no. no. I, I understand that Jaga hurt on a different play, but that didn't help. I guess. He had hurt earlier in the game. I get that. That didn't help. Yeah, well, I, whatever. Yeah, 80s yeah, basketball is back. We like it. Yes, the the, the new yeah. songs. Yeah, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I like I like it to an extent. I, I don't like to see. I don't like to see in the NBA so now. You, you don't I want. Would, you don't want. Jordan I would not want to see. I would not want to see what the Pistons used to do to Michael Jordan any, ever, ever again. I don't like that. Uh, it'd be interesting. What about Malice in the Palace, Matt? <laughs> okay. Yes, that's yeah. even better. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> All right. No, I'm just saying because fans feel like they can do whatever they want, and I'll leave it there. Can we have like Gilbert or Arenas? Like, well, oh. well, not that. Because, <laughs> wow, <laughs> um, I wasn't going that. I wasn't going there. I was not going there, man. You know, if, what's you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, looking up, you, like, you took <laughs> it a step further than that. Was so you heard about the NBA ref that was rigging games, right? Tim no, Donahue. Tim Donahue. No, when when was this? This is way back. Way oh, back. I think now. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've heard about this. Yes, he was refing the Malice at the Palace game. <laughs> of course, he was. Interesting. Okay. Story there. Okay. I'm just saying, fans been acting kind of different. Been to trying to do whatever, say whatever to these guys. Yeah. You know, Ron Artest might have been a. It's like, no, I'm not going with it. No. Nah. Well, let, let's put it this nah. way: if what was happening in 2021, the Knicks Hawks game happened. <laughs> Let's say it was back in the 2000s. Yeah. yeah. And if Trey Young went up into the stands, Trey Young would end up getting beat up. But that's besides the point. Trey Young's a small dude. Yes, he is. He's he's what, like six foot, six foot one? I yeah. think he's six one. Yeah, he's a small guy. Well, not really, but an NBA standard, that's a tiny man. He's small and he's skinny, too. That's he's very thing. skinny. You, you, can, you can say that. He's very, very skinny. Oh, Lord, imagine, I imagine if the 90s Knicks, right, they, mm-hmm. all, they all hold like a dear place in our heart. Yeah. Can you imagine if Trey Young is taking bows and stuff on the Madison Square Garden court back then? When you got, you got Anthony Mason, Charles, Charles Oakley, Oakley and them, like, no, that would not fly. Charles Oakley would make sure he never plays again. That like. would absolutely <laughs> not fly. So Oof. things like that, I, I kind of miss about 90s basketball. But this yeah. series might restore the feeling. That's really true. Might. It really might. I want to ask you guys before we wrap up today, who who is the best player on the court in this series? This in, in terms of this season, this series right now. In this season. Just this season. I'm not saying legacy. I'm saying who is during the series that is starting Thursday, who will be the best player on the court when they step on the court game one? Hmm. That's hard, right? Ooh, I would I'll say this. Mm-hmm. Jason Tatum. His ability to do what he does on the defensive end, being a two-way star in the NBA to me is just the highest ability you can reach because it takes a lot of energy, yep. a lot of stamina to keep that up. Yep. And to to guard the team's best player all game, like Tatum's guarding Jimmy Butler, and then he's out there scoring 25, 30 points. Like, that's hard to that's do. That's very hard. So you have to give credit to guys that play defense like that. But, again... You have Steph Curry, three-time champion, two-time MVP. That's not what we're talking about, though. You're talking about best player. In, in this series, starting Thursday night. It's still hard not to give the nod to Steph, though. Because of his that, offensive That's what I'm impact, saying, though. Like, so everyone, wants to, everyone wants to give the nod to Steph, but he hasn't been great. He hasn't been great. The, well, he hasn't been. Like, offensively. Offensively, he hasn't been otherworldly. He has been what he was, and that, that's fine. He's still good. He's still Steph Curry. He's, he's the best shooter of all time. That, that's no question about that, but... I think I think Tatum's the right answer. It's that's crazy to say, but I think Tatum's the best player on the court starting Thursday. I didn't realize it when you asked, but it's a lot more of splitting hairs between those two than yeah. I realized. Because everybody's yeah. just casuals are going to say, "Oh, it's Steph Curry." But Tatum, yeah, you hear the names. Oh, Steph Curry, of course. No, no, Tatum is really good on both ends too. Great he is on both. So ends. good. He's. Um, I want to give a shout out to Jason Tatum real quick because this really might be. We, we saw kind of with Devin Booker last year, but he didn't finish the deal. Mm-hmm. This could be Tatum's like stamp. Like, I'm top 10. Yeah. There's nothing you can say. I beat KD. Yeah. I beat Giannis. I beat Jimmy. I might beat Stephen Clay and this great mm-hmm. Warriors dynasty. He, he has a chance to put a real stamp and say, I'm here. I like that. I like that a lot. Like, 
It can happen. Yeah. Oh, this is going to be such a good series. I'm so excited for Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, can I end right. with this? Because this is a little yeah, I was going to give you final thoughts. What do you got? So, uh, this, uh, Instagram page, all, spo- oh, ooh, all sports culture, rather. Yeah. Calculated each state's winning percentage. <laughs> oh, no. Really quickly. All who is, time? All time. Oh, this season only. Oh, can I guess who's the highest? Yes. All sports? All sports. California? No. Milwaukee is leading. Or yes! Not Milwaukee. Wisconsin is leading. That's right. what I meant. Yeah! I uh, know what you were saying. But let's go! And uh, Michigan is last. So. Well, yeah, because Detroit sucks. And New York is all under, around. New York is under 500. How about that? Well, that's because the, the island. Not the island. Islanders yet, too. I, I meant, though, the, uh, the Jets and the Giants. Well, that's they, didn't, why. they didn't count New Jersey Devils in New York, so that's interesting. Yeah, but well, they're not. They're not labeled as New York. I'm just saying. Yeah, I get what you're saying. They play in Jersey. Yeah, but the Bills are counted in that? Bills are counted in that. Wow, that's interesting. And the Yankees had a positive record last year. Mets were bad. What changed it this year? This year, the Met, this year, the, the New York should be on Two top. Two New York football Rangers. teams are going to the wild card game. One's winning the division. Oh, my God. Stop. Rangers are winning the Stanley Cup. Yankees are nope. winning the World Series. Mets are getting to the... Uh, World Series as well, but they're losing to the Yankees. <laughs> okay. We're bringing that win percentage back up. Okay. Josh, you got final thoughts before we go? Uh, while y'all were speaking, I'm just watching on Twitter Kevin Durant <laughs> going back and forth. With <laughs> Warrior fans, it must be that time <laughs> of the month. <laughs> I, I, not like that. It must be that regular time that Kevin Durant is is choosing to go back and forth. I really Very thought moody. you meant something else. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm, it's one You're of those right. things where it leaves You're your right. lips. It's like, oh. You're right. But hey, like, why are you doing this? You're in Brooklyn. You're in Brooklyn. Well, we Worry don't know about he, Brooklyn. Well, we don't know if he's going to be there. You know. Yeah, we, He'll he be leave. there. Kyrie's going to be gone. Yeah. Who knows? Sean Marks, you going to give Kyrie that long-term deal? I no, he won't. Please. I won't. Please. Please do it so we can laugh more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my final thoughts say, where is it? I gotta quickly, quickly find it. Here we go. So, Nick Castellanos, I know Mike says the joke's overblown. Yesterday, I, I wanted to put this clip in, but I didn't feel like loading it in. So, yesterday, they, they did a Memorial Day yesterday, obviously. They were doing a tribute to a bunch of veterans on, on the Phillies TV network. And Nick Castellanos looks up to the plate as they're doing a tribute to fallen heroes and fallen Aww. veterans. Drive deep to left. It's he did gone. It. He did it again, <laughs> He folks. did it again. <laughs> he did it again. Do you Incredible. think he's aware of it? <laughs> yeah, of he has he's to aware be. of it. He has to okay. be. Has I don't think he knows be. they're doing it at the time, but he's got to be aware this is happening. It's, it's too odd to be occurring <laughs> so, this much. It's so it's weird. It's too odd. <laughs> uh, they, 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 they do it on the pitch comm. They're like, throw it down the middle. We're saying something sad. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. But coincidence is coincidence. There you go. If you believe in that. But that'll, yeah. <laughs> that'll do it for us here today on WHPC Sports Talk for the Tuesday edition. For Joshua Yumahi, Anthony Deus, I am Matt Leonard saying thank you for listening on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC.